mean, people say rock, rock and roll's dead, but here we are talking about it. So that's saying something to me. You know, I mean, we've we've been out on the road doing 200 plus dates a year for the last few years, and every night you see a bunch of people from all different ages. You know, young, old, um, all different races, all different places, and. Uh, they all, they're all there to hear rock music, you know, like we, when we were out on tour with ACDC, every night you'd see a seven-year-old standing next to a 70-year-old, and they both have their hands up, and they're both singing along, so, um, I think that, you know, when people say rock and roll's dead, maybe they're talking about, you know, what's getting played on the radio, or what's, you know, what's on TV, but rock and roll's out there, you just sometimes gotta go to the back alleys to find it. <laughs> Just like we are right now, right? Exactly. Well, I, I heard the Black Crows when I was 15 years old, and they opened with a song called Horsehead, and that riff like changed everything for me, and I kind of went, I want to play rock and roll, because I was into blues, like a lot of great rockers were. They started out with the blues, and you know, as times progressed, and the genre progressed, it became rock and roll, and so once I kind of heard that progression in an honest form, you know, like the way that the Black Crows did it or Led Zeppelin did it, where they take something and they put a, a new twist on it, I think that to me, I just went, oh, I want to do that. I want to, I want to try to put my own fresh twi twist on rock and roll. But yeah, I mean, it's like there's a certain freedom that you feel when you hear rock and roll for the first time, and you, you're, to me, for me, I always just wanted to feel that. I, I think a lot of rock and roll is pop music, you know, like with, with ACDC that, you know, You Shook Me All Night Long, That's a that was a, a, a big hit song or, you know, but then there's, you know, a lot of people on one hand will go, pop music is popular music. And then there's the other sort of like idea behind pop music, which is this is contrived, this is made for radio, this is made for success, this is made for, it's made to fit into a mold. And that's everything that rock and roll is not about. Rock and roll is about breaking the mold, about being free, about being spontaneous. That's like, you know, that's what the whole New York punk scene was about. It was about being just in the moment. And uh, so, yeah. Social media is, it's like, you know, it has its its um, pros and cons for me. On a, on a positive note, like, I just met a couple people who were here at the show early tonight because they found out about our band through social media. Then there's the, the other, like we've, we've done meetings with record labels before and they're going, you guys gotta get your social numbers up, you gotta be posting daily, you need to use these hashtags, you need to do all this. And it's all just kind of like, oh, okay, you know. So, but then there's, my problem with social media is you have a lot of people who do absolutely nothing who become superstars. So my approach, to social media is not to become an influencer or a you know a social figure that has no purpose or rhyme or reason you know it's like if I'm if I'm posting on social media it's to promote what I've been you know working so hard to build my whole life which is shakedown um, and so like for me I can I can post a guitar video on there and then using the the parts of social media that really work, which is like the cataloging of the hashtags and stuff like that. Then all of a sudden I'm connected to thousands of people who are interested in that. And, um, you know, that's helped the Shakedown build our fan base. So obviously it's like, I still like going to shows and putting on a record. I, I just tried a virtual reality headset the other day. Really? And I had this, like, thought of, wow, man, if it keeps going, Pretty soon, people will be able to just put on virtual reality headsets. And well, I heard they're developing a virtual reality Freddie Mercury. Yeah, you can, you can watch concerts from home, you know, and then you won't even have to go to the shows. But there's still, to me, there's nothing better than standing in front of a band, like being consumed in the experience, and buying the vinyl, buying the CD, which CDs are probably going to be gone in, you know, coming years. But just holding the music and, and letting it being like a tangible thing. So. But, you know, social media has its pros and its cons, you know, it's it's not the 70s anymore, so we kind of have to stay with the times. Like, if you're an artist who's like, no, I'm not going to do that, it's, 
you're just missing out on a lot of opportunities to connect with your fans, I think. You know, I, don't, I, I have been known to tell kids at the, at the merch booth if they, you know, because a lot of kids, like, when I, you know, I, I think about, like, the times I actually stood in line to buy a band's record, it took the last, like, $15 that I had to get it. And so if, if there are kids there who are like, they're with their, their buds or something and they don't have enough money to buy a CD, I'm like, you just burn it for your friend, man. You know, because we're like, the truth is like, if you're, if you're not selling, you know, massive quantities of records, you're not making a ton of money off of, especially if you're on a record label, then you're not making any money, you know? So it's like, we've, we've just kind of gotten to the point where we've taken control back of our music. Um, but still, it's like you're not going to make a lot of money off of the digital distribution. So it's like if, if people are sharing the music, then that's the best thing because for us, the most important thing is getting people in the room. Do you think that the record labels have an influence now as opposed to before the internet? I mean, I think, I think they do. Um, but I also think that right now artists have the same, artists have the same opportunity to influence just as many people as the record labels because one artist could have more followers than the entire record label has in their entire database or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, just, and that's where social media comes in because social media allows artists to take the power back. What was it like opening for them? You, you, you awesome. already had it, right? Yeah, we've done like 30 dates for them or something. It's awesome. That's cool, dude. You ever get to like actually chill with the band? Yeah. We got to fly on their jet with them and We've got to spend some good time with them. Any old war stories? Yeah, I mean, it's it's all just like they're just bona fide rock stars. So yeah, here you go. It's like a thing where hey, Slash wants to hang with you. Then the security guards like hey, Slash wants to hang with you. Yeah. How's Axel in real life? How's it? Great. He's been kind to us. That's awesome. He told man. us like when he said that the first time he heard us was in Lisbon, Portugal, and he goes, "Man, it's nice to have an opening band. I don't have to fucking ignore." And, and then we start getting Guns N' Roses offers. So. That's amazing. So how did you get the Guns N' Roses gig in the first place? Because we were out on ACDC and Brian Johnson. Right at that time, right? Yeah. Time. And Axl Rose stepped in and then we became friends with Axl. And next thing you know, we're on tour with Guns N' Roses. You know, I didn't, I didn't really think too much about the future when I moved out of Texas. And, and I, uh, I just, I threw my favorite guitars and favorite t-shirts in the back of my pickup truck and I drove and I got an apartment and I ate ramen noodles for years and just like didn't have money and started a band and we went on the road and it was never like oh let's get rich you know that's like I meet a lot of kids who go I want to I want to quit my job and become a, a musician and I was like well, why because uh, it seems like a good way easy way to make money and I was like, have you ever, have you ever really thought about it? Like, it's really not an easy way to make money. You have to like, you have to want it and not be able to do, imagine doing anything else. Like, that's what, when I, when I moved out, because I got out of school when I was 17 and I told my parents, I'm moving to Nashville, I'm going to write songs for a living. And through songwriting, I ended up starting a band. My dad goes, well, what's your backup plan? And I said, well, I, I don't have one. And he goes, well, then you're going to be all right, you know? And to me, that's like kind of the spirit that rock and roll has to have. It has to be relentless, and it has to be, yeah, well, we played in a stadium last night, tonight we're playing in a club. We have to go with, the, you know, and deliver that same fury that we delivered last night. Hey, thanks for watching. My name is Daniel Sarkissian. I'm an independent filmmaker from Toronto. I hate that guitar, but I yeah, hate. I can play that in one scale. <laughs> don't don't like, you dare laugh. You know, I try to embrace the rock and roll spirit in the sense of I do everything self-funded and independently made with no oversight. As such, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for watching.